Hello. Hey, is Dustin there? Yes, it's him. It's Laura. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I wonder if you lost my number. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just had to find the phone. Uh-oh. Did you lose it already? <laughs> yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> you better not lose that phone. I won't. <laughs> Mom asked you why you got off the computer without her telling you to? <laughs> nah, I kind of snuck away. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I can't stay alone, though. I don't want Harry to find me on the phone. Yeah, I don't blame you. Thank you for letting me call you, though. Well, I wanted to hear your voice and everything, sweetheart. I'm glad you called me. <laughs> I like the way you sound, too. I'm glad. Uh, you can call me whenever you want to. Just don't get in trouble for it. Okay, I won't. I better go before I get caught. Um, i got to go start the laundry so it'll be a few minutes before I get back online, but I'll be back online. All right, sweetheart. I love you. Okay. Bye. Bye, sweetheart. The voice you just heard was Dustin McFetridge, a 26-year-old man. He had given his phone number to whom he believed to be a 13-year-old girl so he could verify her age, and after deciding he likes what he heard, he traveled five and a half hours to see them. Welcome back to another episode of Dreading, or if this is your first time here, welcome. Today we are going to be reviewing the police interview of Dustin McFetridge, a man who was caught in one of many stings done by perverted justice in the television show To Catch a Predator. This video was made publicly available by the Cappening channel here on YouTube and will be linked in the description box down below. Usually, in a video like this, I would want to include the footage of Dustin being confronted by Chris Hansen, but due to copyright issues, I will not be able to place that footage in this video. However, I will include a link to it, should you want to see his behavior for yourself. This video came highly requested by our subscribers, specifically after we went over the case of Jim Rouch, which we will similarly link in the description box down below. As always, if there are any cases you would like to see explored on this channel, or any stories you would like us to bring attention to, let us know by emailing us at dreading.official at gmail.com. With all of that said, let us begin. Dustin McFetridge was a 26-year-old former supermarket employee when he began talking to a girl he believed to be 13 years old online. However, this wasn't his first time speaking to children inappropriately, as a while earlier, he had a different incredibly explicit conversation with a 14-year-old in which he tried to coerce her into sexual discussions and being his girlfriend. This conversation was later discovered by this unknown 14-year-old's mother's boyfriend who was a part of law enforcement. According to Dustin, this police officer was enraged, unreasonably so, and flew off the handle after finding out about Dustin's behavior. He made threats against Dustin, telling him he was going to file charges and put Dustin in jail. However, this didn't happen, seemingly because Dustin's family apologized for his behavior, and he was forced to call the officer and the child and apologize on the phone. It seemed as though that instance left a long-lasting impression on Dustin. Not to never speak to children in a sexual manner, but that he could get away with anything that he wanted, and consequences didn't exist for him. On September 30th, 2007, Dustin would happen across a profile belonging to a 13-year-old girl named Laura. However, Laura wasn't actually a real person. She was the alias of an adult working with the group Perverted Justice, who went undercover in online chat rooms to expose the dangers of talking to strangers online. Dustin began the conversation normally enough and within one minute of talking, he was informed that the person he was chatting with was a 13-year-old girl. Knowing that, discussing anything sexual with the child was illegal, as he had already done so in the past. He kept the conversation light, talking about movies and video games, and discussing how she liked her hometown. At least that was true for the first 15 minutes. After getting through some vague pleasantries, he began calling the child Sweetie, Babe, and other pet names before making sure that she was primed not to tell her parents about who she was talking to. He asked her what her living situation was, where her parents were, and if they were paying attention to what she was doing on the computer. When she said no, and that she was chatting with him in secret, he rewarded her with praise, making sure to put the onus of responsibility on her, should he get in trouble for talking to her. This two-pronged attack of creating a fear within the child of their family 
while also showering them with praise, is one of the most common tactics for online predators, as it isolates the child incredibly quickly. In most cases, the child has never been talked to in this way. They have never been in a relationship, never been called sweetie, love, and darling, and it makes them feel cool and important. They feel like an adult, as if they were more mature, and for the first time in their lives, they have responsibility, which most children jump at the chance for. Then, when the person giving them that feeling tells them that their parents would probably get mad if they knew what they were doing, that they would likely hate them for trying to keep them from talking, it creates a sense of urgency and desperation. In order to keep the positive feeling associated with the conversation going, the child will go to extreme lengths to hide it from their parents. They will learn how to delete their internet's history. They will give out their home address so they can accept expensive gifts, like burner phones, to talk to the person undetected. And they will act out of their best interest because they are a child and don't know any better. And immediately, that is what Dustin has done. Dustin entered this conversation knowing how he was going to proceed. He knew how to manipulate young girls, how to isolate them away from their families, and how to get them on the hook for him, so to speak. And shortly thereafter, he began sending the decoy 13-year-old girl a kissing emoji and telling her that he wished he could kiss her in real life. He told her that he loved talking to her, that she was his favorite part of the day, and within the span of five conversations, he was pressuring her to take her mother's digital camera and take naked photos of herself to send them to him. In that time frame, he also asked for her address, which she directly denied, saying she knew she wasn't supposed to tell him that. The decoy stated that she had never had someone tell her they liked her before, and that she didn't know what to say to him in response. So he upped his game, telling her that he liked her as more than a friend, and wanted her, someone he believed to be a child, to be his girlfriend. He immediately followed up that question with asking her what her bra size was, and what kind of panties she wore, providing her a list of acceptable answers. Following that exchange, he officially tells her that he's falling in love with her, and asks her if she will let him take her virginity. He is forced to ask this question multiple times, as the person portraying the child makes it clear that she doesn't know what he's talking about, which he states makes him excited. He asks for her address directly after telling her this, and she ignores his question. But it's clear that he wants to see her in real life, and he wants to make the heinous things he is talking about a reality. As the conversation continues, Dustin begins to undermine her parents even more, saying that even though she likes him, they won't because they think he's a predator. He's going as far to tell her that she is starved of attention, specifically because she doesn't get enough love from her parents, and only has him to rely on. The decoy fully rebuffs the statement, saying her parents love her, they are just really busy presently. But Dustin doesn't stop. He wants to isolate her and create a divide in her mind. He wants her to view her parents, the ones who love and support her, as the enemy. They just don't understand her, they don't spend enough time with her, and it's their fault that they can't be together. He asks her to run away with him, shortly thereafter, to be together, and he tells her that he wishes her mom wanted to get rid of her so he could be her guardian. Continuing his grooming, he tells her to watch porn by herself and think of him, and continues to goad her about giving him her address. Dustin tries to pressure the decoy into giving him her social security number and sending him a pair of her underwear after she wears them for a couple of days. After she talks about her sister, he asks if she would be open to having a threesome involving her, despite the fact that said sister is eight years old. The full chat will be linked below, but the rest is fairly repetitive and frankly gross, the way every conversation with a child like this would be. But after nearly a month of talking to this child, Dustin finally gets what he's always wanted her address. She tells him that her mom is going out of town for a bit, and that if he wants to meet her, he can come over and see her the next day. And despite living states away and having cerebral palsy, Dustin makes the journey, completely unaware that he's walking into a sting. Again, due to copyright issues, I will not be able to put the footage on screen, but I will link the full version in the description box down below if you want to watch for yourself, then return. You can skip to this timestamp if you are already aware. However, for those of you who want a truncated viewing experience, I will simply explain what happened. After traveling nearly six hours across state lines to meet with and assault a 13-year-old, Dustin was delighted when he was met with an adult woman playing a child. He immediately entered the home and sat down, and she asked him if he planned to follow through with everything he said online, that being shaving her genitals and having sex with her, and he enthusiastically confirmed. Almost immediately after, Chris Hansen made himself known, 
and Dustin immediately retreated into himself. He claimed that he had no plans to do anything with the girl, and he had only traveled this way to make sure she was okay. When Chris rebuffed his statement, reminding him that he had just stated he brought a razor for the express purpose of shaving the child, and he had also brought lubricant, Dustin admitted that he was planning on shaving her, but it was okay because he thought she was 17, which Chris immediately debunked. Dustin then began to do what most of the predators do in this case, that being blame who they believe to be a child for their own actions. Dustin began to claim that he only sent the child graphic porn and asked her to be his girlfriend and brought lubricant to her home when her parents were away because she had asked him to, and he, as the adult, was unable to deny them. He admitted to doing this before, and how he got away without being reported or charged was because the parents of the young girl took pity on him and then continued to blame the decoy, saying he only did it because he didn't want to disappoint her. As usual in these stings, Dustin isn't told he's going to be arrested, and when he leaves the home, he actually seems a bit pleased with himself. He believes, for the second time in his life, he's going to be allowed to prey on a young girl and get away scot-free. He is a bit annoyed that he's being filmed, but otherwise, he views the experience the same way as his first time. That is, until he opens the door to leave, and sees at least six police officers there, ready to arrest him. His experiences had taught him that if he were to mess up and get caught by law enforcement, he would be given a pass. He was taught that if he was just to emphasize how he couldn't really harm anyone because of his cerebral palsy, he would be let off with a warning. But the moment he sees the police, he realizes that isn't true. And we are about to watch the interrogation of a man who has never had to take personal responsibility in his life. Again, this interrogation was made available by the Cappening channel here on YouTube. I will have the original video linked below, and I hope you'll send them some support. Now, let us begin. You're just ten minutes I got an interviewer who's going to come in here and talk to you in private in a few minutes. This day gets worse to worse. I never imagined of hurting anybody and I never imagined I'd be arrested. Technically, both of those things are true. In Dustin's mind, he cannot conceptualize what he did was hurting another person. Him pressuring and manipulating a young girl into explicit conversation, getting her to feel comfortable enough to send him her address, and potentially having sex with him, is not something he has ever thought about being damaging, because he is only thinking of his actions through what they will give him, which is pleasure. But let's think about how the girl would feel about that. She is put in a position where she feels like her family, the people who love her and try to keep her safe, are actually out to get her. She no longer can trust anyone but this one person she met online, who was only interested in her body and what she can give him. She does whatever she can to keep this grown man's attention, and eventually has sex with him. And then he grows tired of her. Sure, he continued to say that he wants to get married to her, and that he wants to be with her, but he doesn't want the responsibility of a child. He doesn't earn enough money to feed both her and him, and he's gotten what he wants from her. He slowly stops participating in their conversations. Over time, she realizes what happened. She realizes that all that talk of love, caring, and respect was all a lie, and now associates sex with manipulation. And with his manipulation still in her head, she feels as if she can't talk to anyone about what happened to her, because they would somehow be mad at her. She begins to see herself as something to be used, not someone to be respected and cared for. And over time, that turns into more self-harming behavior. There are countless ways for their interactions to go. But this one is the one that psychologists see most often with girls who have been preyed on online. But Dustin does not see it that way. He only sees it through the lens of it would be fun, and he could get off. He is also being honest when he states that he never thought he'd be arrested. We will see it later on. But because he uses a cane and has cerebral palsy, Dustin was used to people treating him with kid gloves, so to speak. He was used to people giving him special treatment, as if he were incompetent, and completely unable to make his own decisions. But... That is not true. He figured he would be let go, or at the very least, his chat logs and images wouldn't be used in the sting operation, because it would make them, the arresting officers, and Chris Hansen look bad. Look at them, bullying and picking on the struggling young man. He is very aware of how he is viewed by others, and is trying desperately to hang on to any bit of sympathy he can use. To be clear, this 26-year-old wanted to have a threesome with two people whom he believed to be a 13-year-old and her 8-year-old sister. 
police station. Evening, Dustin. Oh, um, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I even. Well, stuff happens. We'll have a chance to talk I about mean, it. I mean, I don't. I've never hurt anybody, sir. Okay. And I mean. I'm not saying you're hurting anybody. Yeah. I'll just, just slow down. I'm going to have to get yeah. some information from you, okay? I, know. I don't. I just, you know who I am? No. And you're sitting here telling me your whole life story. Just hold on a sec, okay? Um, the officer immediately tries to befriend and gain Dustin's trust. But that isn't necessary in this case. Although many officers benefit from rapport building with the person being interrogated, Dustin wants to be perceived as a wounded puppy dog. He wants to be viewed not as a contemporary, but as someone who couldn't possibly hurt anyone and will try to farm sympathy throughout the entire interrogation. I'm too honest about everything, okay. sir, and... Well, we'll get, we'll get a chance to talk all about it. I mean, that. you can see that. You want a water? No. Okay. I'll probably throw it up right now. Well, it's there if you want it. I'll well, just relax, it. man. Just relax, okay? Just calm down, all right? Calm down. We're just going to talk a little bit, all right? Um, I'm going to get some information from you real quick. I mean, like the Dateline NBC guy told him. Well, I'm not with Dateline, I'm an okay? Idiot. I'm not with Dateline. My name is John, all okay. right? My name is John Dudinsky. I'm with Kentucky Bureau of Investigation, now the Attorney General's office, okay? okay. I'm an agent, and which means I'm a policeman, okay? Um, ain't no reason to be all nervous or anything. All we're going to do is we're going to talk. I'm going to get your name and stuff, all right? I'm just... All right. The reason I'm nervous is because, honestly, this can keep my mama. Okay. Within the first three minutes of the interrogation, Dustin has stated... He is too honest, he's an idiot, and that he is nervous about the situation. Not because he is selfishly scared to take responsibility for his own actions, but because he is selflessly scared for his mother. He is throwing every possible sympathy card at the officer and trying to see what sticks. At the same time, he has begun to cry, with the hopes that the officer will be uncomfortable seeing a grown man shed tears. All of this is done in order to make the officer feel uncomfortable labeling him as a criminal offender. He is trying to establish that sure, he might have said he wanted to sexually assault that child, but he couldn't have possibly done it. He's much too soft and sensitive to do such a thing. Well, I am an only child. Well, let's, let's do this. You sound like you want to you talk to me, okay? And I want to hear what you have to say, but until I tell you this, we need to... I just, I don't want to get to jail because I can't, I couldn't deal without having the... Jail. I understand that. Because, I mean, I can't walk without this. I understand. Okay. Before I ask you any questions, you got to know your rights, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in court or in other proceedings. You have the right to have an attorney before you make any statement or answer any questions. You can have your attorney present during questioning. You may request the court to appoint an attorney for you if you cannot afford to hire one. All right. If you start talking to me and you want to quit talking, you can stop at any time by refusing to answer questions or by requesting consultation with your attorney. All right. I don't like lawyers, and I'll be honest. It's... You don't like lawyers. No. <laughs> All right. This is about the worst thing that Dustin could have done. I have said this in nearly every video I've made going over police interviews, but the worst thing you can do is talk to the police without a lawyer present. The police are allowed to lie to you in interrogations. They are allowed to pressure you and make you think they have you dead to rights when that isn't true. And a lawyer's one job is to make sure you get a fair shake. And to be clear, the police are not infallible. They can and have gotten things wrong countless times. With that in mind, if you were ever brought in for police questioning, even if you are 100% innocent, you should always request to have a lawyer present. The police will try to infer that that means you are guilty, or that means you're hiding something. 
but they are not there to protect you when they talk to you. Dustin stating that he hates lawyers and will gladly talk to the police is the worst thing that he could have done in the situation, but that tracks with the rest of the things that he's done so far, in that he can only manipulate children. Um, what this says here is that I've read you your rights. Do you understand them? Yes, sir. You understand that you can stop talking at any time yes, you sir. want to. You can have an attorney. You can have an attorney with you during questioning. It's 11.09. Yeah, I forgot it's the time change. Yeah, we're on mm. central time. I'm an idiot. I'll stop pausing every other word in a moment, but think about the last time you talked to someone as self-deprecating as Dustin. The last time you were talking to someone and they couldn't help but interject with comments about how stupid they are, or how idiotic they can be, and how ridiculous their own actions are. In most cases, that person is looking to be comforted. They want the other party, usually a stranger, to assure them that they aren't stupid. They just made a mistake. They are fine and normal. But the officer is refusing to give that to Dustin, so he will continue his pity party. I did a lot of wrong. And... Okay. If you understand your rights, as I've read them to you, if you'll sign right here for me where it says signature. First thing I've ever done. I ain't signing anything. Okay. Now this, this waiver down here says that you having the above statement of your rights read and explained to you, and you fully understand them, and that's correct, right? Correct. You hereby waive these rights at 11.10 p.m., and you're wanting to talk to me, correct? Yes, sir, I will. Um, I'm going to... You know the really bad part of this? The daylight on the NBC guy said I wouldn't be under arrest, I could leave. Hold, hold on a sec, just sign right there. Well, Dateline doesn't doesn't work for for us. They're not policemen. They're news people. I know, but that's just wrong that he lied to me. Right. Well, we'll, talk, I mean, I we'll talk about that in a minute. I understand why I'm here. Right. But he shouldn't have lied to me, you know? Right. He should have said, well, you are under arrest. Sure, Dustin, that's the worst part of all of this. Not the part where you traveled nearly half a day to go have sex with a child, or you manipulating someone who you believed to be a child for over a month that you were the only person in their lives who truly cared about them. It was Chris Hansen telling you that you wouldn't be arrested, and that's the real issue here. Okay. I'm going to turn this on real quick, all right? And then... okay. I thought you were videotaping. Nah, I'm going to tape record it. I'm old-fashioned, man. Oh, okay. Well, did you go digital? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what this was when I saw it. I was like, where you put the tape in? <laughs> yeah, go. I was supposed to buy my buddy one of those this week so he could write his book. Oh, yeah? He's going to write a book? Yeah, he's a wrestler, but I won't mention no names because I don't need to be in All right. Anywhere. Well, it's 2311, and uh, I'm talking to Dustin. What's your last name, Dustin? McFetridge. McFetridge? Yeah. Okay. So the whole world will find me easily. All right. If it's released, and I mean, I don't want trouble. I don't like trouble. I'd have never hurt her. I was well, going to meet her. I wasn't going to force her into anything. And this m morning, I think it was 11, 12 Eastern time, she had called me and come see me, please, because my parents are going to be out of town, please. This of course is not true, but let's proceed for a moment as if it is. Other times when I have covered predator stings, I get a significant amount of comments stating that nearly every man featured in this segment was entrapped. They say that the decoy all but forced them to come to their home, and had the decoy not been so alluring, these men wouldn't have tried to sleep with them, which is a ridiculous notion. As an adult, you have a fully developed brain, and you can properly assess right and wrong. You know what is dangerous and what isn't, and you can make decisions for yourself. If you want to get that surgery to make your neck longer or remove your feet, you can do that because you would be able to assess the medical risk associated with that decision, but a child could not. A child is not able to properly assess the consequences of their actions and fully think through things the same way an adult would. With that in mind, a child can be attracted to an adult and attempt to flirt with them. 
because they don't know why that's wrong. They don't know the issues associated with that. And it's up to the adult, the person with the fully functioning brain, to say, no, this is wrong, you're a child, and remove themselves from the situation. There is no blaming a child for the actions of an adult, even if the child was the aggressor, which they rarely ever are. That doesn't take the personal responsibility away from the adult. I'm like, okay, I was going to call, I thought she was going to call and we was going to talk and discuss stuff and everything, because she has called me a few times. And I mean, it was out of the ordinary, and I, like the NBC guy said, she's, she said she was 13, I thought she was 17. Sometimes I have a bad memory. I know 17 under the limit too. I was talking to her, and I was thinking, okay, she turned 17, and then when she turns 18, I'll meet her. And if anything's meant to be, I'll meant to be then. Well, you're kind of, you're kind of starting, like, just, just tell me a whole story out there, but not from the beginning. Why don't you, why don't you start from the beginning of how you met her and... Okay, I can. Okay. I was just being honest. And well, I be honest from the beginning. Yeah, like okay. I said, you jumbled it all up there for me. Start from the beginning. How'd you happen to meet her? Okay, I was in a Yahoo chat room. I don't remember, Tennessee chat room. Tennessee chat room. Yeah, it was a Tennessee chat room. It was probably one, two... Five, seven, or nine. That's the usually ones I go through. And I mean, I've only talked to one other underage girl, and that was a problem, like I told the NBC guy. Well, we'll get to that. Tell yeah. me about this girl. <laughs> yeah, okay, I am. I'm just trying to explain everything, and I'm bad at telling stories. All right. I met her, I talked to her some, and she's real friendly, real nice, and everything. And like I said, I thought. She said she was 17. You know, there's no problem with talking to somebody or calling somebody at the eight. I don't think there is, is there? No, I mean, no problem talking to somebody who's 17, but yeah. go ahead. I mean, well, I'm asking the law <laughs> because I'm, I'm not, I know you can't do nothing with anybody under 18 if you're over 18. I know that much. Okay. I didn't know if it was bad for me to pick up the phone and talk to a 17-year-old and say, hey, how are you? I didn't know. <laughs> so you're talking to her? Yeah, and we're friends and everything. She's being sweet and joking around and stuff. And I mean, it's in Did the, you ever see her? I seen photos, photo of her or something on her MySpace. Okay. Um, Did she ever see you? Yeah. I gave her my MySpace page. I mean, I share information. I, right. I'm a very open person. I mean, it's like I told her a few days after we started talking. Yeah, I'm, I have cerebral palsy. I walk with a cane. I don't, know, I don't know if I told her about my hand or not. And stuff like that. I'm very open. I don't want to hurt nobody. and I like to make friends. The internet's the best way I can make friends because people look bad upon me like I'm retarded or something personal. So it's hard to make friends other than that. This could very well be true, but using your disability as an excuse for why you felt the need to talk sexually to a 13-year-old is incredibly vile, and once again shows how manipulative Dustin is. He has done this before. He knows right from wrong. Just because making friends in real life is difficult for him, that doesn't justify him preying on minors. Also, I didn't say this previously, but he continues to state that he believed her to be 17 years old, and that is patently false. She stated that she was 13 within a minute of their initial conversation. But moreover, he talked about her age frequently, saying that he loved that she was just 13 and that he didn't want to wait five years to meet her. I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff that happens on the internet like this and people lie, but you can make some good friends on there. And I don't... It's just, and then we just started talking, and I don't know, I lost my head. I done something stupid and stuff, and I egged it on, and she 
encouraged and she agged a little bit. And I mean, like I said, today, she agged me coming up here. I didn't have no plans of doing it. I really didn't want to, but she's a sweet person, and I didn't want, want to upset her. And that was stupid. I should have told her no. And if she got mad, oh well. But I, I wasn't thinking. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll meet her, hang out. Nothing bad. I mean, I've. Stupid thing is, I've heard reports like this in Virginia and other states and stuff like that. And these weirdos will bring ropes and knives and stuff. I didn't bring. Do you, do you have anything like that in your car? No. Would you mind if we looked in your car? I'll be honest, tell you everything that's in it, as far as I know. Well, what I, what I'd like yeah. to do is is get you to say it's okay for us to look in your car. Yeah, it's fine. Because we want to verify that you didn't bring nothing to kill her or anything. No, the only bad things I brought was my electric razor. Mm hmm Because she said she wanted to be shaved down there, and I don't know why I did that. Mm -hmm. And I think I... Let me... I... I can't remember. I thought I brought some hand moisturizer or KY jelly. I don't know which it is. Okay. I can't remember. What was and that for? I don't know. I don't know why I even brought it. I wasn't thinking. I just picked it up. Hey, Justin, if, uh, if we're going to talk and be honest with each other, I am. okay? I am. I'm going to be honest with you. I know where you're coming from. But yeah. it's, it's hard to meet people, okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I, get I, I picked it up. <laughs> okay, hold on a sec. I know how hard it is to meet people. See that? I'm 40 years old. You know what I mean? I try to meet people all the time. Never I understand married. what it's like to get on the internet. You mm. know what I mean? To meet people. Okay? Mm. I understand what it's like to go visit people. But I never get in my car and throw KY jelly in there without a reason. Mm. All right? But I, I'm being honest. Why did you throw the KY jelly in the car? I don't, I, like I said, I don't know if it's KY or okay. hand lotion. I okay, what were you going to use it for? You can, one's for sex, one's for washing your hands. You weren't going to wash your hands with KY, right? No. What were you going to use it for? I guess. Was it in case you had sex with her? Yeah, but I was going to try not to. I understand but that. I'm, I'm being honest. I understand you got to, I mean. I'm a man too. You got to try and resist, right? Yeah, it's hard. But if it would have happened, I'd you had the KY jelly, you were prepared. Yeah, but I mean. Okay. I ain't gonna lie to you, and I mean. Okay, well let's. Do I this. don't know. Let's do this right here. Like I said, I'm. I'm an idiot. He is an idiot, but not for the reason he is trying to put forth. Again, he is trying to play up the angle that he simply didn't know any better. The evil 13-year-old was the one who forced him into driving nearly six hours to her house to have sex, and he was powerless against her. He's just too nice, too trusting, and too lonely to tell her no. Meanwhile, he did bring a razor and lubricant for the express purpose of having sex with her and fulfill his fantasy. Not hers, his. Okay. I mean... Well, I'm not calling you an idiot, you know? I'm calling myself one. Well, I'm not going to call you one. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to listen to your story, okay? And we're going to talk about a few things I that mean, are in your chat just to make sure everything's okay. What kind of vehicle are you driving tonight? A 2005 PT Cruiser, and it's actually in my mother's name and my name. What, uh, what color is it? Depends on how the sun hits it. It's a bluish purple. Okay. I'm being honest. It's it's a weird color. I've only seen one other one like it. Tennessee tags? Yes. It's good memory. Well, I come up with the saying. Go I with couldn't it. tell you the plate number of my but truck, I've... and I've had it for five years. <laughs> Somebody ever steals it, I'm in trouble. Yeah, well, that's that's I've pretty got, good. That's the second vehicle I had, and that's the only vehicle I've locked. So, all right. And I told you already, my name is John Dudensky, right? Yes. And I'm with the Attorney General's office. Mm. I mean, please don't arrest me because it's I can't survive in jail. Well, we're gonna, gonna we're gonna home. we're gonna talk about some stuff. All right. So, just. Stay calm, drink your water, relax. We I can't drink water. We got we got time to talk, okay? So we're not gonna get in a hurry about anything. Well 
what's the camera recording or something? Yeah, that's so that, you know, protects both of us. You mm -hmm. can't say I did something to you in here, and I can't say that, you know, you mm -hmm. did something you didn't do. I mean, like I said, I, I'm going to cooperate because, I mean, I'm so guilty. I mean, I'm under a rock. Okay, what this states is that uh, I did anything but physical. You hereby consent to a complete search of the premises, property, or vehicle located at Bowling Green Police Department. What, what was all those cameras here? Is that NBC or what? Yeah. They have to get my permission to use it, don't they? No, they don't. Well, you're gonna have to discuss that with them. I don't have anything to do with that. I'm with, I'm with the police agency. Oh, I thought you all had done this before. I mean, like I said, I've read about. Okay, this states that you consent to a complete search of your your vehicle located at Bowling Green Police Department, and more particularly described as a 2005 PT Cruiser, bluish purple. You grant this consent to John Dudinsky, known to you as an agent of the Office of the Attorney General, and to such other officers deemed necessary to assist. You know that you have a right to refuse consent, and you voluntarily give up that right. You know that the agent does not have a search warrant. You have not been threatened or coerced in any way, nor have you been promised any favor or benefit. You have read this consent form, or had it read to you, and you understand it. The date is 20th day of October 2007 and the time is 11.21 p.m. Is that correct? So, and you're going to allow us to look inside your vehicle, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I just need you to sign right there. And I mean, honestly, that's all that's in that bag as far as in the back. They might be two pairs of shoes. I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to clean, so... All right, are there any weapons and or anything in there? If there is, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> because I don't know about them. Okay. There might be a few DVDs in my buddy's wrestling promotion, but that's about okay. it. Could you print your name here for me, please? Okay. And then write your, your address. I'm in an end, but they so bad to do that. I'll tell you what, I'll write your address in for you. What's your oh, address? You guys ain't going to like, go search the house right now, are you? No, we're, because I mean this is for your car. I just need to put that Okay, on because there. I was going to say, if y'all are, let me at least call my mom and tell her. What an idiot I am. Right. Well, Before this, is just, this is just for your car, okay? Yeah. Are you hungry? No, I'd throw up, man. I appreciate it. Well, I didn't know what your medical situation was. If, no, if but you needed something to eat to keep your blood sugar level. I was or, upset as I am. I might have a panic attack. That's the only thing. Do you take any medication or anything mm -hmm. that... You're due for. No, ma'am. I don't. Well, I'm going to leave this here just in case you end up needing it, okay? Do you need anything for me? I think they're going to uh, let him. Yeah. So whenever you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and mm -hmm. take this up. You need something, John? Give me a hand. Right. So, you met. Just take us back here. You meet her online. You, uh, talk for a while, send each other some pictures, get to know each other, mm -hmm. get to chatting on the internet. She asks you to come up. You throw KY jelly in the car and just in case and I believe you, I guess mm -hmm. you tried to resist. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't force myself on anybody and I mean Well, let me ask you I, this. I Did couldn't you? force myself. Let me he absolutely could force himself on someone, especially if that someone was a child, which is why he likely targeted children. In their conversations, Dustin asked the decoy how tall she was, how much she weighed, and found that he had over 100 pounds on her. He was also quite a bit taller than her, 
and he hoped that he would be able to overpower her when the time came. He is blatantly trying to use his disability as a sign of his innocence. He wants the officer to see him as meek and unable to commit the crime he was caught red-handed committing. Let me ask you this. You, uh... You said you talked to another, another girl that was underage one time. And what, what happened on that? The... I had originally talked to an older lady, thirty, late thirties, early forties. Where was she at? The Tri Cities. What's the Tri Cities? Is that what the city's called? Or? It's Kingsport, Johnson City, Bristol. I can't remember which city it was. Okay. I mean, all in Tennessee. Yeah, they're Kingsport, all Kingsport, right Bristol, and Johnson City. Okay. They call them the Tri Cities because you can hit any of the th- one from the other within like five mile distance or something. Right. Well, they called the Tri Cities. And she had me start talking to her 14 year old daughter, and I said, I didn't want to. And she gave her daughter my name and everything, and her daughter was wanting to date me, and she was wanting me to, the lady was wanting me to date her daughter, and I was like, no, and I tried to be a pervert to get her to leave me alone. And then her, I said, all I want is sex. And Who'd you I, tell that to? The daughter or the mom or what? I know the daughter and I'm wanting to say the mom too. What was it? What was the mom's name? I couldn't tell you. This has been uh, I think. I'm I'm trying to go back in my mind. Two thousand, two thousand one. How old were you then? Twenty one, twenty? Yeah. And it's like I so just, the mom asked you to talk I was to trying her daughter. To get, yeah, I'm trying to. And you start to, talking to her, and then the mom wants you to start dating her daughter. Yeah. Did she ask you that online to date her daughter? I believe so. And actually, I told the mom was asking me what I was doing for my birthday. I told her I was going out to dinner at a Japanese steakhouse. What was? trying to think that's what i'm saying my memory's bad (laughs) so he can't remember because he's lying about this happenstance not because his memory is bad he's trying to claim that years prior to this he was caught talking to another minor but only because that child's mother wanted him an adult to date her daughter she forced him to talk to her daughter in a way he believed was inappropriate but instead of simply not doing it turning off his computer or blocking her and her daughter he decided that the best way forward would be to act like a pervert and make sexually explicit requests of the child so the mom stops pressuring him. Which makes literally no sense, and no one in their right mind would believe that to be true. The reality is that Dustin, of his own volition, sought out the minor, engaged in inappropriate conversations with said minor, attempted to isolate them like he did in this case, and was caught by that minor's parents. I mean, that's part of cerebral palsy, I think, is a little damager there yonder uh it was some kind of chinese or a japanese steakhouse i told her she shows up looking for me the mom did with the daughter mm-hmm. that was a little strange and the the man was the the woman's boyfriend was a cop and i mean i i apologized and I cleared it up without going to... What'd you have to apologize for, though, if she wanted you to date her daughter? I was trying to cover anything up just so I didn't go to jail or anything. Because, I mean, people... There's something missing from that story. That don't make no sense. I understand, sir. I'm trying to Okay, so you got online, and uh, the mother wants you to go out with her daughter or something, and you tried to act like a pervert so that... You wouldn't, uh, so she wouldn't want you to date her daughter. Yeah. Right? That's what you're telling me. Yeah. And. What type of things did you say? I just want sex. That's all you said? I believe so. I didn't go into no details like in, in that thing over there. I, I mm. guarantee that. He was about to say, I didn't get into details like I did with the last child, but he stops himself, which is strange given how he has already admitted to the crime multiple times over. I had never met the girl or anything like that. Okay. I mean... So, 
when you said you just wanted sex, what happened then? Next thing I know, she was upset and crying, and I was like, I at just, the restaurant? No, I didn't say oh. this at the restaurant. This okay, was, you said this on. This was or? after, yeah, this was after the restaurant. They didn't find me at the restaurant. Okay. We was back there in the back at a far end table, I think, and they didn't see us or something. I knew what the mom looked like, and I can't remember if I seen a picture of the daughter or not, but I remember the woman had a... So where did you meet this cop and the girl and the mom at? I never met them. They, oh, they, okay. I t the mom asked me, I think as a mom, asked me where it was, what I was doing for my birthday, because I mean, yeah, my birthday's November 15th, and you know, people ask who. Right. That's a common thing online. When's your birthday? Right. And you, know, without saying, they try to get to know you. What do you do for? Well, fun? what I'm saying is, before this birthday thing, before the birthday thing, you I was you told to, her you just wanted to have sex. No, I told her after that. After the birthday thing. Yeah, because I mean, if they're gonna find me there, it's yeah. a, a little strange. And I mean, I okay, didn't. Okay, so I you didn't, told her after that. Yeah. Then what happened? And she was upset, and I tried to resolve the issue. And I went to t the technical school I was going to then. And I come home that day, and mom's second husband says, You are, there's a cop calling here for you. I'm like, You, what? What's going on? And it was, I don't know, it wasn't a sheriff, it was a police officer, and he said that they are thinking about filing charges. And mom talked talk to him, and I don't know the whole story. That it's like if he apologizes, we'll we'll leave you alone. So I apologize, you know, and I because I don't like trouble. Yeah. So you never got a ticket or anything for it, or no, never I, had to go to court. No, it was settled over the phone. And do you remember the girl's name? No, I do not, sir. Okay. How I, old was I, she? I want to say 14. That's why I didn't want to talk to her in the first place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew back then not to talk to people younger. Because, I mean, and I thought it was weird that the mom wanted me to talk to the daughter. If you knew, if you knew, why did you talk to this girl? I'll, I'll talk to anybody on the Internet, but I didn't mean for anything to escalate escalate to the way it did neither right. and I mean you say things and you don't think I mean we all do I'd, I'd say and I, I know what's in that and you got time to, to think about it now on what you said on some of the things you said correct yeah and I mean well let me, let me I egged a lot of it on and she did a couple things she did a couple things so what I did mean, she do to egg it on like call, she called me today want me to come up here mm -hmm. Well, you were telling her you were her boyfriend, right? Uh, you wanted to marry her. After she's 18? Okay. If we got along. Yeah, if you read that. Okay. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm sure I'll probably flip-flop. Here's the problem we got. Yeah. You ready for the problem? Yeah. Is you don't want to go to jail for a long time. Yes. All I'm, right. I want to know... That I want to know the story on what your intent is and what you're planning on doing, okay? And some of these things I'm going to need you to explain because a jury and a judge are going to be looking at these things, right? Okay. And they're going to say to themselves, this guy here might have been willing to kill this girl or something. No, sir. Because some of this stuff looks, looks pretty bad. Um, but... Let's establish nice. right up front. You knew that she was 13. I thought she well, was... Let, hold on, oh. hold on. I told you, we're going to be honest with each other, yeah. all right? I'm, I've been totally honest with you and up front. Yes, sir. I expect and the same back, okay? If I... you'd have thought she was... If you wouldn't have known she was 13 or something, why were you 
right away worried about a cop and telling her I can't talk to you. In several chats. And telling her how to... I mean, I, I, I can mean, read this chat right here, and it talks I about you, sir. talks about her being 13 later on, and that is 13 days ago. And you're telling her how to get rid of stuff on the computer so nobody knows what you're talking about. I didn't want her to get in trouble so we can't okay. even speak. Okay. And I don't, I don't did like... You, did you not want her to get in trouble, or were you worried about you getting in trouble, or both? I was worried about her getting in trouble. You weren't worried about you getting in trouble? Mm. When the first thing you say is you're making sure there's not a cop or anything because you don't want instant trouble? Dustin has overtly stated throughout this interrogation that he is just an idiot. He didn't mean any harm. He's just too trusting online and shouldn't have listened to the child who said she wanted to come over. And that is his main and really only fault. He has played all of his cards, from saying he believed she was 17, he only came over there because she pressured him, and he couldn't hurt anyone due to his disability. But the moment the transcripts are shown to be in the room, and Dudinsky begins to read them, his lies fall apart. He was extremely calculated, pitting her against her family members, teaching her how to delete their chat logs and make it look like they had never talked to each other, and how he was telling her that he wanted to marry her. He brought her age up repeatedly, unprovoked and at times, stated it was so hot that she was so young. All of his lies immediately fall apart, and he is shown to be an incredibly calculated predator. I mean, the Again, part... Yeah, I'm, let's, I'm, let's be I'm being honest. honest. I'm being honest, sir. The part about showing her how to clear that... Right. Well, so she didn't get trouble with her parents because she said she wasn't sp supposed to be on the internet chat. Mm -hmm. I didn't want her to get in trouble... Like that, and I mean, if I get in trouble, I mean, I have to deal with the consequences. I'm dealing with them now, and I hate them, and I don't, I made some stupid choices, and I don't want to, I wish I could take it back, and I don't want to hurt nobody, and that's the truth, and I said some stupid things in there, and When, when you tell her to, you want to hide, hide the stuff that's on there, and how to archive stuff. You know, a lot of this leads up to you wanting yeah. to protect yourself more than worrying about her. Am I pretty accurate on that? Yeah, I was thinking more of her, but yeah, it was. For me too, and I like I said, I don't want trouble. I mean, I don't want nobody to get in trouble. I'm not, I'm not blaming you, but what I got to get to the bottom of here, I know. okay? I'm, I'm being yes. honest with you, sir. I've got to get to the bottom of what's going on. And when you tell me half the truth first, mm -hmm. and then the other half of the truth later on, and I got to ask ten more questions, all you're doing is make it hard on me. And mm -hmm. like I told you, a judge and jury is going to hear this. Mm -hmm. You have things in here asking her yeah, if I, she's. If she's had her her first period yet, I know. Um, you have things in here that sound as if you want to uh, take her off somewhere, buy her from her mom. Yeah, that was a joke. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I said a lot of things. That you're that you're willing to take her, marry her. You want her to send her panties. I know that one was. I don't know. Her social security number? Like I said. So that you can find her? If something happened after, if we lost contact between now mm -hmm. and when she was 18, that's what that was for. And I'm being totally honest. I don't know why Dustin believes that makes it any better, because if they lost contact between when she was 13 and when she turned 18, did he expect that she would want him to track her down using her security number and randomly show up? He essentially admitted that he would stalk her and potentially kidnap her, which I'm sure he would be surprised to know is also a crime. And the paintings was a stupid thing, and I, I was just to see if she was real. Alright. And that's being honest. On the 13th, you knew she was a 13-year-old girl, correct? By what I just read you, and you just told me that, right? I'm guessing so. I'm bad with dates. Okay. That was seven days ago. And she'd been a virgin 
supposedly is what you're thinking or, or whatever you're saying. I can't she wait. said she was. You, you're saying, I can't wait to get your cherry. Yeah. I Which, don't correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm an old man and I might have been out of the system for a while, but that means that you're going to... Take her virginity. You're going to take her virginity. But... At, now, hold on no, a second. And you came up here... I at didn't have... At 11 any. o'clock at night to me Because her. I couldn't get here any faster. Okay. I would have been here during the day. <clears throat> Would you? You'd been here during the day. And I'm, I'm being honest. You've sent her pornography over the internet. Is that, that one correct? Photo. And what's that a photo of? Because she said she'd never seen a penis before. Mm-hmm. And why did you send it to her? I don't know. That, I don't know. Because she said she'd never seen one. Okay. And, I mean, if somebody asked me a question out of curiosity or... How do I do something? I'm stupid enough to tell. You know. I try to help people. I share knowledge if I have hey, it. Hey, remember we're being honest with I each know, other. I okay? know. I'm well, being honest with you. Let, let's be honest, okay? I am. If somebody asks you how to build a birdhouse, you might send them a diagram. Okay? Yeah. But that a, was, girl that that age, a girl that age asks you or says she never seen a penis... And I don't recall her asking you. I've read the entire string of chat, and she never mm-hmm. asked you to send her what a picture of a penis would look like, right? I asked her if she wanted to see it, and she said yes. Hold on. But she's asking you or telling you she's not seen a penis or nothing, right? Correct. Were you trying to get her excited about sex? No. But no, sir. I- How many of these chats do I have to read out loud to, for you to say the truth of what you were doing. You're asking her to touch herself. You're asking her if you show up, will she touch you? If that's not trying to get somebody excited about sex, what's it trying to do? You're not sending a birdhouse. There was a few of them that was... Did you send that pornography to introduce her to sex? No, sir. Why did you send it then? Because she said she'd never seen one, and I mean, I'm being honest. Okay. Why does it? Why does a girl that age have to see one? I don't know. I don't have no answer for that one. <laughs> there is no... Was it to educate her about sex? Subconsciously, I guess so, because, I mean, I didn't think that when I was seeing it, neither. And, I mean, I don't... I was just... She was your so, gr- She was your girlfriend on the Internet, and I can appreciate that, a girlfriend. You know, you're, you're I thinking... Know, and I mean, you're thinking you're going to... You're going gonna, you're gonna to have a girlfriend for life, Correct. Yeah, you know, because I get lonely, and I mean... Understood. A, a lot of people look down upon me for my disability, and it hurts, and hey, I've hey. had mental breakdowns. Again, Dustin brings up his disability as a way to negate him grooming a child. But there are plenty of people with cerebral palsy who do not feel the need or desire to go on the internet and tell minors that they want to be their boyfriend. There are plenty of men and women with cerebral palsy who don't drive nearly six hours to see a 13-year-old to have sex, and I am sure they would be offended at the idea that that is somehow an acceptable action for them to take. You're looking at a chubby bald guy, buddy. It ain't, uh... Well, you ain't chubby. It ain't... I'm chubby. It ain't easy. I know it ain't easy. So, I mean... I know it ain't easy, man. But, you met her. She was your girlfriend. You were going to have... You were going to come up here, you were going to meet her, you are going to watch some movies, right? Yeah, that's what, what she's... What movies were you going to watch? I don't know. Okay. If... I figured she... The way she described her parents, she I was, figured she if had... If she was willing, based on everything you said, were you going to have sex with her? You want the honest truth? That's why I'm sitting here. I, I was going to meet her, and... We may have, we may not have, if we got along, if not... Why did you bring the KY jelly? It was to have sex, correct? With the if, if it led up to that, because, I mean, like I said, if it led up to that, if I didn't plan on having sex, I didn't come up here planning on not having sex, having it either way. Like I said, I picked it up. I grabbed it. I grabbed a few things okay. real quick. You grabbed, okay. If I'm going out on a first date... 
my first thought is and throw some KY jelly in the truck. If I know that that this girl is a sure thing, I'm gonna throw some KY jelly in the truck. And I mean, did you, did you throw the KY jelly in the truck because you're pretty sure you're gonna have sex if somebody wants you to come no. that far to see them? No, sir. I mean, you I, didn't you didn't take it that she wanted to have sex from. Do I have to read uh, the chats? No, sir. Okay. No. You pretty much knew it was, that you were coming up here for sex, correct? No, sir. It was one of those 50-50 things, and I understand you, where you're coming from. Are you going to make me read the chats again? No, sir. I, I understand what we said. And okay. I asked her if we was. Where do you want my sperm first? I don't know. Mouth, pussy, or ass? I, I mean, that wasn't in reference of meeting today. Okay. I want it. All I want to do, okay, a lot of is, is get on with this interview. But we got to get over this hurdle. I know. Okay. I know. We got to get to the truth. I'm. I'm why I'm you threw the on. KY jelly in there? Did you come up here expecting to have sex with this girl by because of her emails back to you? And no, you sir. saying you want to have sex, and she's like, "Yeah, sounds cool." No, sir. I mean, it was one of those fifty-fifty things she wanted. Fifty-fifty. If we could have had sex, we could not have had sex, and I mean... But you would have had sex if you hit it off with her. If we got along and I thought it was a meaningful relationship, honestly, then, yeah. Okay. But if we didn't get along, no. Because I'm not one of these people that... Well, you asked her to be naked for you to get here. In one of your chats way back when y'all talked about me... The first time you said something about being naked when you get there in your panties or something like that. Forget exactly how you worded it. I'm trying to think of that one myself, sir. Yeah. And I'm being honest. I, I mean, want to get you drunk. Later on. Yeah. This is a yeah. this is a 12 year old girl. Do you know the drinking age in Kentucky? 18. Okay. Yeah, I I didn't it's say 21. Oh, it. But let me yeah, tell I mean, you this. Yeah, I'm 21, but okay. I wouldn't. Remember what I told you before about a judge and jury is going to hear this. I know. This sounds to me like you wanted to hurt somebody. Would yeah. you be mad if I got you drunk and had sex with you however I wanted and the next day you were in pain? I want to F you really hard one time. Now, when you were yeah. coming up here. I forgot I even had that conversation. Okay. That's what you want to do. That's what you're telling her you want to do. That okay? was not... If you have a meaningful relationship, were you wanting to have a meaningful relationship and make love to this girl, or were you wanting to just do her real hard and treat her bad and beat I, on her? I was what? wanting to have a real relationship with her. Yeah. That was that was meant for much later on, and I don't even know why I even come up with that one and said that. You know. But if things would have worked out, you'd have had sex with her tonight. If we got along and stuff, and I mean, I don't know. All right. I mean, I've met people out, offline before, and I've met people... You spend a lot of time on the computer? <sighs> yeah, because, I mean, I sit there and I play games on the computer and on the Xbox 360, and it's... I mean, I don't have much else to do because I mean I've tried to look for a real job mm -hmm. and it's impossible to find a job it's going to be real impossible after this but people look so down computer's a good thing you know if used correctly a computer's a good place to meet friends yeah and I mean other than th this situation that other one I told you about I've never done anything like that what so basically he's saying other than the multiple times I have done this, I've never done this. Also, what he is saying is untrue. He'd been employed during his life, but he'd been fired for not doing his job. There are plenty of jobs for people who suffer with visible disabilities, and though it is harder to find employment, it's not impossible. However, it fits Dustin's self-pitying narrative to pretend that he has never had his own job and is incapable of taking care of himself because it would be harder to view him as an adult. Dustin is banking on people viewing him as less than, in order for them to ignore the fact that he repeatedly stated he wanted to have sex with multiple children. In this interrogation, he is admitted to going to her house with the want to have sex. 
but is hoping that because people view him as being incapable of harm, they will let him off with a warning. What chat rooms do you visit? Uh, the Tennessee ones I listed earlier, like one, two, three, five, seven, nine, I think. How do they look on the internet? Is it Tennessee One or something? Or? Yeah. You just sign, sign in. And then a wrestling chat room. A wrestling chat room. Have you ever met anybody in any other chat rooms that you've had sex with? Yes. Any of them underage? No, sir. What, no. What's their screen names? Do you remember any of them? I can try to. XX, Perfect Drug, XX, I think. Where, where did you meet these people at? Which chat rooms? The same ones? This, is, this has been over years and years. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say. And she was talking to me about she had moved back to Tennessee and she would like to see me again. And I was like, okay. I talked to her some and then she disappeared again. The one, you, Not this one, the one you had sex with. Yeah. And she was, uh, I want to say 21. 21? Nobody underage? No, sir. All right. Uh, what's your cell phone number? And if I had the phone in front of me, I could tell you who's who, if I had had anything with them, how where, old they are. Where do you live at right now? At home with my mama. And I mean, like, I would rather break the stupid news to her first. Okay, what, uh, what city is that again? I mean, like I said, I don't want to go to jail. I can't live in jail, and I don't want no problems. And Dustin always knew that this scenario was a possibility. He always knew, when talking to the decoy, that he could wind up sitting in an interrogation room with Officer Dudinsky and be on his way to prison, but he didn't care. He willfully made the choice to engage in sexually explicit conversations with a child, then drive hours to see that child with the hope of having sex with her. He even admitted to being open to having sex with her, had he not been stopped. His desire to not go to prison didn't stop him from any of his past actions, so his anxiety about this is purely self-serving. If you only care about the consequences of your actions when they become your physical reality, you don't actually care about the consequences of your actions. Now, when you live there with her, is that your computer? Is that her computer? Or? She bought it, but I use it. Where's it at? In the house. And I guess it's my living area. Your living area? Yeah, I mean, I've got a bedroom. I've got two bedrooms. One, one's got my bed in it, and then the other one's computer desk. And, and that's your area? Yeah, our computer desk. Does she TV. use the computer? She has a few times. She's used it a few... She had her own and it tore up. And she uses that occasionally and stuff. So it's you, you and your mom just live together? Her third husband. He lives there too? Yeah. Does he use your computer? Mm, he's used it a couple times to look at x-rays and he's used hers a couple times. X-rays? He's got a bad back and neck. Oh, okay. And he's not very computer literate. And mm -hmm. What kind of computer is it? Just uh, one I custom ordered. Oh, you custom ordered it? Yeah. I ordered the parts and I had a friend to help me build it. Oh, really? I can do, I can do parts of it, but I can't do a few things with it because so of So you're pretty hand. computer savvy, though. Somewhat depends on the subject. I mean, up I, until two years ago, I didn't know there was a caps lock button. <laughs> didn't know what that meant, so I didn't touch it. But you can build one so, with a little help. Yeah, really? I mean, it's just buying the parts and yeah. stuff on the side. And what about a a webcam? You got one of them? No, sir. I had a uh, I had a uh, some kind of cheap digital camera that they had on TV. I plugged it up once to see what it was about a webcam, and I don't even know where the thing is. It's mm -hmm. either in the closet or buried in the computer desk one. Do you have any pornography on your computer? Yes, sir. Anything of anybody underage? 
I don't think so. You don't think so? How could you not know? Did you ever see any underage on your on your computer? Or view any images? I've viewed images before, under, I think. Of underage people? Not meaning to, and I don't know what I was saved on it. What do you mean, not meaning to? How can you not mean to? I mean, you go on, on the internet and look at porno, and you don't know if they're of age or not. Mm -hmm. Some are. Well, remember, I just told you, I just found a caps lock button a couple years ago, so I'm not real computer savvy. So explain to me how you get porn on the internet. I understand you can punch in porn, but what I'm talking about is underage people. Do you do you exchange porn with other people? No, sir. Okay, how do you? I do have, it? I've well, I will change that story a small bit. I have a female friend that has sent me a couple fo female photos of a couple of her friends on a adult friend finder or something like that. Okay. So, so the porno that you're looking at is off of websites. Yeah. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, and off of Emul X, and I mean... Off of what? A download program. Download program? What yeah. did you call it just now? Emul X. Emul X? It's Emul, but you don't have to share stuff to send. So that could be just other people sending you stuff? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you save porn on your computer? Yes. So Videos or just pictures or... Or both? Or? Both, and I'm, I need to delete it. I meant to. Do you burn uh, any CDs or anything of it? I think they have been burnt CDs of it, and I don't know exactly where they are. I don't know if they're on the desk, if I've thrown them away or what. I can't. So Dustin has now passively admitted to viewing child sexual abuse material online but he tries to downplay how involved he was in the interaction. To be clear, no one accidentally views the material he's talking about, especially if you somehow get sent links through an email service. You have to seek it out. But despite Dustin saying he built his own computer and is actually incredibly smart, he is saying that he might have accidentally viewed CSAM only because he has no way of verifying the ages of everyone involved. And sure, he downloaded it, but only because he didn't know what it was. And okay, yeah, he did burn it onto a couple of DVDs, but that's not terrible because he doesn't actually know what he did with those DVDs. And just as a reminder, he believes that he will be allowed to leave a free man. He fully believes that his manipulation with this officer will allow him to walk out of the station without charges being pressed. Um, I mean, I'm getting rid of it as soon as I go home because I don't want trouble and I And I mean, I, I help my buddy do DVDs. And I mean, I... He, Did you all ever burn any porn DVDs? No, he, he he does wrestling DVDs of himself. Okay. That, over the years. And I've edited the matches down. Right. So he can sell them and stuff. Because okay. they're, they're his matches, and I mean... I can't lose the computer because I can't help him if I lose the computer. And I help him with his website. And I mean, I'm being honest with you, sir. And I mean, like, as soon as I get out of here, I'll go home and delete any porno off the web, off the computer, go through every DVD I have, CD, whatever. I say DVD and CD, and it's the same thing to me because it's the well, basics. Pornography in itself, looking at porno, isn't necessarily legal. What I'm interested in is if you have pornography of underage people, and you told me not that you know of. What, um, what is the likelihood that we're going to find something that's somebody underage? There's probably a few photos and a few videos that I had downloaded. Of underage people? Yeah, but like I said, I ain't went through. You downloaded them? Yeah, did but you I, save them? But I have not went through all of them. But did you Anything. save them? Yeah, they're on the hard drive, and I mean, there was a. At one point, it was saving things in different folders, and I had not went through everything to see what it is. Right. That's what I'm saying. Did you. Uh, what's the likelihood that you burned any of these 
to disc where there's underage people? I don't think I had because of the ones. You don't think? I'm asking you what no. the likelihood is. Do you remember ever burning any? The only ones that I've burnt to DVD, I had viewed, and there was no children in them. Did you ever share any pornography with underage people? No. Okay. I don't share porno, period. Once you get it, yours? Yeah. You got to find it yourself. Okay. And I mean... Because I don't know who's, who would be on the other end. Dustin seems to think that this is noble and also funny. He's laughing about the idea of sharing some of the CSAM he has with other people because he, quote, doesn't know who would be on the other end. Initially, when I heard this, I believed he meant he didn't want to share materials with other predators like himself. However, upon watching this for a second time while recording, I realized he is stating he doesn't know if a police officer would be on the other end of the interaction, and it would lead him to being caught. Similar to how he repeatedly stated he didn't know if the decoy was a child or a cop, and he said that without any sign that he realized how horrible it was. So your mom and I guess your stepdad and you you live in this house. Is there anybody else that lives there? No, sir. no children. At one point, her niece was staying with us, and I wouldn't. Your mom's niece. Yeah, and I would never think of doing anything. And how old was she? You're asking a hard question because I can't even remember my birthday. Sometimes six to eight, and I mean. You never did nothing with her? God, no. What's her name? I don't know her last name. Okay. And Who's your internet provider? It's changed over the years, and uh, if they don't change it, it's going to be Earthlink because they had messed up my, inter- my credit card bill. When's the last time you get on your computer to uh, receive pornography? To receive pornography? Been a while. Been a while? Been a long time. When's the last time you chatted with a girl other than the girl that you got picked up for tonight? In what manner? Talking about sex or anything. Uh... I was aggravating a late 20 year old last night or the night before aggravating her about sex uh, I think I she was was joking around about MySpace mm-hmm. and she said oh no well you upset there ain't no uh, sex sex survey I said, no, but what's your favorite position? That's all it was. That's all it was. This statement is vitally important because it links back to what I said earlier about his manipulation of the child he thought he was talking to. In their conversations, he stated he was her boyfriend, he loved her, and that she was the only girl for him. She repeatedly said no one had ever told her they liked her before, and that she had never had a boy make her feel important the way that he had. And he was saying that to multiple other people. Had he really been talking to a child and they had had sex, he would have gotten exactly what he wanted from her, and he would have moved on to the next person. She wasn't special, he didn't love her, everything he said to her was a lie, which obviously would have negatively affected her when she realized what happened. She would likely associate romantic words, affirmation, and love with being manipulation. But that doesn't matter to him, because he would have gotten what he wanted. And I said, uh, what was it? Would you run away with me? I think it was. Just joking with me. I mean, her husband's around. Mm-hmm. Joking. And I would never do anything like that. And I mean, it's. Alright. I gotta go. Did you have a driver's license in your wallet? Yes, sir. Okay. I gotta go get your driver's license real quick, okay? And then I'll be right back. We'll finish up and we'll get you taken care of so you can get out of here, okay? Okay. What's going to happen to me, sir? Well, I'm going to release you to a transport officer. They're going to take you over to the jail, okay? And they're going to let you make bond, all right? 
What's how much is bond? I don't know. We don't set that. Do I have the jail to? sets that? I can't make bond. The, well, there's a lot of different options on it too, but I don't I don't know what they're offering tonight or What's what, what it's going to be. Well, that, like people can sign for you or they can OR you, but it's all up to the judge and up to the jail. I don't have any control on that. Okay. But let me get your driver's license. I'll come back and talk to you just one minute, okay? Okay. Here's what we're going to need to do real quick. Okay, well, here's what we need to do real quick. All right? Okay. All right. We're going to fill this out right here. Let me ask you this. On your house... I got an address here of one house. Correct, sir. Not a duplex, nothing like yeah. that. It's a single house. Yes. Yeah, I thought we. I thought Mom had changed it. I can't do nothing. Yeah, get this. Okay, they put red light. The 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 cameras up there in Kingsport had a couple red lights, and I ain't saying nothing bad, but they changed the timing on them. From like five, six seconds to three seconds. And I get to the second hash marking before the red light. It goes to yellow. You know, I thought I could go through it. Yeah. And I get halfway below it and it goes red. Because, I mean, two hash markings, you're going to slam on your brakes and probably hit the steering wheel. Yeah. So I had to go through it. And, I mean, on the registration it says... Right. The ticket only came in Mom's name. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-oh. And Mom that, probably wasn't happy, was she? She said she was like, "Well, you owe me a hundred dollars." I'm like, "Oh God, that was me!" Because another car ran the red light at the same time on the yeah. other side. Yeah. <laughs> well. So. And it's a single house. What color is it? Uh, why does? Off white, I guess. Is it uh? What, what's on the outside of it? Is it siding or? Yeah, it's siding. Is it vinyl or wood or? It's siding. I right. mean, uh, vinyl siding. Vinyl siding. What are y'all gonna search it now? Well, I gotta know where it's at and what the description is. And uh, before you all do, could I please call her and let her know? Well, you're gonna get to make a phone call at the jail. And you live a long ways away, so, you know, <laughs> I'd say it'd probably be a guess, yeah. Well, I mean... I would I would guess, yeah, but I have no control on that. I mean... I'm not, I'm not going down there to search it, okay? But somebody might, and I have no control over when you get your phone call at the jail, okay? Well, I'm, I mean... I understand. She's going to be pissed off either way. I'm sorry to use, say so that. So your house is vinyl siding. Is it, is it one or two stories? One. One story. Is there a garage on it or anything? Carport, gravel driveway, maroon shutters. Is there a number on it? I think. Or on a mailbox out front or anything? Should be. I'm trying to think if they're, it's still there or not. There's a, the is or was, I'm, the memory's bad. I'm wanting to say there's gold numbers on the but post. But they may be gone. Carport that says 149. What's the most unusual about 
think about your house if I wanted to pick it out? What would I look for? It's the only one on that side of the street that's got a gravel driveway and a carport. Okay, only one? I believe so, and I mean, you ain't gonna miss it with that description. What about the other side of the street? Are there ones with gravel driveway? No houses, I think. One trailer has a gravel driveway. Any other ones have carports? There's a couple, but that's the only vinyl, I think, with a carport. This uh, stepdad of yours, has he ever been arrested? I don't know. Okay. Are there I've, any guns I've in the house or anything? I don't know if he has any or not in there. Then I think they might be a rifle BB gun behind the door. But you've never seen any guns other than the BB gun? At one point, Mom had like a little Dillinger, but I think she either gave it away or threw it away because it didn't work. That was on top of the refrigerator. But but no, a there's... Derringer, right? I guess. I don't know. It's yeah. a tile about that long, and I mean, I have guns. I don't, I can't fire them, so I don't own any. Okay. The only gun I may have is a light gun for a video game system. <laughs> I think I seen that the other day when I went there for a controller, but I mean, that ain't a real gun neither, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, you have any dogs or anything? I think Mom's keeping her, her brother's dog in there, and there's a cat. What kind of dog? It's like a six or eight week pit bull. Does it bite? Playfully. Okay, but it don't go up and grab your leg and try and take a chunk out of you, kill you. It's about like that, like that, like that, it, I guess. I mean, can you walk up and pet it and stuff? Yeah, I Without did. having it yeah. go for your throat? Yeah. All right. All right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here, finish up your citation, hand it off to the officer It's going to transport you. Justin, good luck to you. Uh, do you have anything to tell me before I leave? Anything else? I, I, I'm sorry that I didn't mean no harm. and I know I said incriminating stupid stuff, and I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I mean, that's God's honest truth, and I don't want trouble, and I don't want to go to jail, and I don't want to help the legal system, and I, I hate that I'm wasting your time on... I well, I'm not being here stupid, anyways, but, but but I mean you're doing you, Justin. doing doing what you need to. Even in that final statement, Dustin believed he would be let go. He directly states that he hates that he's wasted the cop's time, even though it's anything but a waste. He was going to have sex with a child. He admitted this in the interview that that was his goal and he still believes that he's done nothing wrong. Following the interrogation, the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office was made aware that Dustin had admitted to downloading CSAM to his computer, and that he had images on a hard drive in the home he shared with his mother and stepfather. The next morning, deputies descended on the home and found over 100 images in his possession. At the same time as the raid, Dustin was charged with the felony of traveling across state lines to engage in illicit sexual contact, and requested that he be placed in the custody of his mother instead of going to jail. He stood up in court, and like he had in the interrogation, stated that he wouldn't survive jail and needed more help due to his cerebral palsy. The judge, having seen the transcripts and Dustin's owning of child sexual abuse material, ignored his pleads and set his bail at $50,000. In 2008, Dustin was found guilty on all charges and was subsequently sentenced to five years in federal prison. Two years later, he was charged on another felony offense, that being the sexual exploitation of a minor, and was sentenced to eight years in prison, to be served concurrently with his other sentence. While in prison, Dustin would write a letter to the judge, stating that he had learned his lesson and now knows what he did was wrong. He asked to be immediately released from prison, and said should they not release him, he would like a walk-in jacuzzi placed in his cell, which is an outlandish request. He would only serve four years total, and would be released in 2014, 
where he would have to register as a sex offender and placed on community supervision for the remainder of his life. But it would seem that Dustin did not learn his lesson. His name would once again appear in the news when he would be expelled from his court-mandated sex offender treatment program in 2019. With his counselor citing he was not making any measurable progress. In their notes, they stated he wasn't making an effort and routinely lied to them, like he had to Dudinsky. They had done multiple polygraph tests on Dustin and found that during these tests, he was shown to have been dishonest when answering the questions of if he had been alone with a child since his conviction, and if he had recently seen porn. Obviously, given his prior convictions, the fact that he was lying about those answers is alarming. It was also revealed that he repeatedly rejected the rehabilitation process, stating that he was not responsible for his actions, and that even if he was responsible, life had already dealt him a hard enough hand with his disability. He felt that trying to change was a moot point, and routinely mocked his peers for trying to better themselves. His expulsion from the program meant that he would be due back in court in 2020, but the court date continued to get pushed back due to health concerns and other scheduling conflicts. He would end up writing the judge on March 31st, 2021. The following is the letter, as made available by Joey's TCAP channel here on YouTube. A link to said video can be found below. To Honorable Judge Ronnie Greer, Your Honor, I am writing this because this pending violation has continued for way too long. I am not the same man that appeared before you in court. I was on a powerful depression medication called Vralar. Vralar made me close to a zombie and extremely emulsional and made it hard for me to walk or get out of bed. I have been off this medication for more than a year, 9-2020. Thus, I have been clear-minded and willing to do anything asked of me from probation and Teresa Fletcher. The combination of Raylar and me falling and hitting my head on a table and breaking the table on 6-18-17. I have had CAT scans and MRIs and a 40-hour EEG to show there is damage, so I feel the hearing for violating my probation is not necessary. The reasoning for the violation is due to medical issues and medication that I cannot control, regulate, or help. But that is not true. Once more, Dustin has attempted to make it appear that everything that has ever happened to him, anything negative that has happened in his life, wasn't because of the choices he made, but because of other outside factors. He was kicked out of his rehab program because he had brain damage, caused by an antidepressant and a fall, not because he lied about being left alone with a minor and because he wasn't taking rehab seriously. He's being unfairly penalized, the same way he was unfairly penalized by the police who arrested him and took away his CSAM. Dustin believes himself to be the victim in every situation, even when he is preying on children. Nothing he does or says will ever be his fault, and anyone who tries to hold him accountable is actually the person with the issue. Continuing on, Your Honor, I ask that you please intervene on my behalf and give me a relief or a release from my supervised probation. I have been under supervised probation since 11-6-2014. Other than the violation in front of you in court, I have no issues with any law enforcement whatsoever, not even a speeding ticket in these seven plus years. I have even provided probation with a monthly log of every time I leave the house and what I do until I return to the house every month with the required paperwork that has to be sent to probation every month. Additionally, I send a log of every dollar I get and spend at where also with the paperwork. I feel I am being more than transparent, clear, and honest with probation. Your Honor, I will be willing and happy to sign any and all paperwork, legal document, or forms to be released from supervised probation. I will agree to which I, Dustin McFedridge, will not commit any more sex crime, nor fill any new crime with the rest of my life. If I commit any said crime, I will plead guilty and be held to life in prison without any release or nor appeals. In exchange for the above statement, I receive release from supervised probation. That is very considerate of him. I bet the judge was really impressed with him stating that from here on out, he will agree to not break the law and harm children, despite already doing that, and not following the terms of his probation. When you think about it, that is pretty thoughtful of him. He is essentially telling the judge that before, when he was expected to obey the same laws that every other person in the U.S. obeys, he didn't really care for that. But now, after dealing with the consequences of his actions, he will allow himself to be governed by laws, but only if they promise to make a special exception for him. I have also been restricted from internet use since my release. I understand that yes, I used the internet to commit my crime, but I am not the same man now that I was when I appeared in front of you in your court, and definitely not the same person I was in 2007. I fully admit I done wrong and 
committed a crime. I never argued that, and I truly am ashamed of what I have done. I wish I could go back and fix the issues in my thinking back then. I have changed my thoughts and actions, and how I do everything now since my release from prison, so that the cycle and pattern I was in in 2007 is changed never happens again. Okay, but you could also argue that you were forced to change it because of the consequences of your actions, and if those consequences were changed, changed in a way that you wanted them to be, you would immediately go back to preying on children. It's easy to say you've changed your ways when you have literally been unable to do those things that you were doing before. I no longer drink any alcohol since February 2015. I no longer self-isolate myself in a room. I have absolutely no desire, want, or need for a chat room, Facebook, or any social media outlet nor desire to speak perverse or sexually to anyone. I have also been finally allowed to attend church, and I attend a lot, by not every service. I didn't have the religious beliefs then that I do now, nor did I have such a great positive support in real-life social group. I had no such group before 2018. I have also been seeing Teresa Fletch since 10-19-2020, until my probation told me in January of 2022 she don't count as sex offender treatment. Me, Teresa Fletcher, and my mother, plus my support friend Betty Rapier, was under the understanding Mrs. Fletch was to substitute as individual counseling in place of group counseling. Probation has said they did not have funding to pay for this, so I have paid the $100 a session with Mrs. Fletcher. I have never been good in group and hate conflict with people, and due to my health limitations, I am not able to defend myself if someone gets mad and decides to attack or assault me physically. So I felt one-on-one -on -one counseling would be safer and a lot less stressful, also a lot faster too. Mrs. Fletcher treated it as sex offender treatment and probation had sent her a 39-page document to fill out to do with me completing sexy offender treatment. After doing a lot of it over the last three months, they told her not to worry about because she's not contracted with them to do it. Why was I seeing her and paying all this money for it if it wasn't sex offender treatment and also probation talked to her and sent her paperwork as if it was sex offender treatment? So if I am understanding this right, he had a sex offender treatment program, which was his group program, that expelled him because he was not taking it seriously, and consistently disparaging the other participants, which is probably why they didn't like him, and he was worried about being beaten up. He's expelled from the program, then decides to see a therapist privately, and he communicates this with probation. His probation officer says that she isn't approved, and they give her paperwork to fill out for approval. She fills out the paperwork then is not approved, and he's upset by that. There once again, the consequences of his actions. The probation officer told him that he would have to go to group, which he was removed from. They told him that his therapist wasn't approved, and he would have to pay for it himself. But he once again is upset because he is not given special accommodations. He had the means to continue his treatment. The only thing that got in his way was his own actions, and he is still finding a way to blame others for that. I would have spent or paid all this money of my limited income. I'm on social security and my check as of 1-1-2022 is $1,130. Mrs. Fletch has been paid from this $200 to $500 a month depending on how many meetings we have in a month. Your Honor, by me, not having internet limits my job opportunities to almost null. I need a desk job due to my physical limitations. I suffer from cerebral palsy, and every desk job requires a computer and the internet. I have three computer degrees in repair, and I cannot use them to make money because I cannot purchase parts or get software need to repair a computer. I also have a programming job. I have a written offer of mentorship and employment of completion of the mentorship. I have some knowledge on programs, but it's way too old pre-2005. To do the job or learn the job requires internet, to watch instructional video guides. I wish to work a job and make more money than I am making on social security. I only receive $1,130 a month. My job income would be more than three grand a month. By me not having internet is keeping me from having a real paying job. Thus, this limitation is causing a hardship on me. Also, everything is online, even McDonald's. Walmart has cheaper prices online than in store. Even the ink cartridge to print this is $5 more in the store. Again, I have to emphasize, this is all the consequences of his actions. He downloaded child sex abuse material. He used the internet to sexually exploit multiple minors. It doesn't matter if he can't find a job. It matters that children are kept safe from him. He doesn't seem to understand that he is being punished, like life is not supposed to be easy for him now that he's out of prison. Even with the reasoning I gave you, probation refuses to stop the hardship. I even offered to use monitoring software and pay for it out of my own pocket. 
All right, no, because monitoring software can be worked around, especially by someone who knows how computers work, which Dustin does. We literally saw this in the case of Josh Duggar and countless other cases like it. Probation refuses this also. Thus, why I am asking your honor to reduce my probation stipulations, or release me from probation, so I can be a productive member of society and pay taxes and not be a burden on the taxpayers. Your Honorable Judge Greer, I appreciate you taking your time from your busy schedule to read, consider, and hopefully grant me relief, or release, from probation, or some of the restrictions they have on me. I have various supporting documents to hopefully help and prove myself to your honor. But if you believed him from that artfully written letter that Dustin had changed, you would be in for a surprise. In 2022, Dustin was caught breaking his probation by talking to a group of teenage girls in a video game store and was brought back into court for said violation. He once again wrote a letter to the judge complaining about his life following his prison sentence and how he would kill himself if he could. As of today, Dustin is still a free man despite his numerous probation violations. He has been given multiple slaps on the wrist, and chances are more than likely we'll have to make an update video on him later. But let me know what you thought of the case in the comments down below. Do you think Dustin is responsible for his own actions, or are you of the same mindset as him? That being, he should be given a special pass for preying on children. With all of that said, I hope you have a great day, and remember to stay safe.